Hello everybody, Mark Shamia, founder and CEO of Suits and & Sneakers, and I'm back with another small business showcase. We have been having the biggest blast just meeting interesting entrepreneurs, finding out about their stories, and most importantly, just putting a, a showcase and a spotlight on people doing really interesting things. Perhaps at times they've been hit by COVID or not, it doesn't matter. The whole aim and idea is just to use our platform to put a spotlight on people doing cool, amazing, and interesting things. And with that, I'm really excited to be able to introduce you to Tash Fagri, <laughs> right? That's it. Oh, there's nothing worse than butchering <laughs> someone's surname. No, you got it, you got it. Okay, so I always like to start in the same way. I always, for the people who don't know you, mm -hmm. who are you and what is the value that you add to the world? So, as, as you've said, you got the name right. My name is Tash, Natasha Fagri, and I'm the co-founder of Frost Popsicles. South Africa's first and only range of premium alcoholic and non-alcoholic pops. I think hopefully that in itself shows what value I'm trying to add to the world. Mm. Something new, something innovative, something to remind people how to have fun, um, but most of all something pure, not filled with lots of nasties. That's what we do. And I love that. And I think that people don't appreciate how hard <laughs> entrepreneurship is. Yes. So I would love for you to just give a bit of a backstory as to sure. how this company came about and the idea formed. Sure. So essentially how we started was I saw a concept overseas, um, really wanted to make something local, managed to get my very patient business partner, John Mark, to come on board with the mad idea. It started in my kitchen and over a course of 16 months, we basically took a product from nothing. Neither one of us came from the food or frozen background. And we took it to South Africa's first wine popsicles at the time that launched in September 2016. We wanted to work with a South African brand, which we did, a South African wine farm. And over the course of, in September this year, it'll be four years, we've grown the range under the Frost Popsicles banner to include seven alcoholic and three non-alcoholic pops. All natural, low calorie, no preservatives and fully recyclable packaging. I mean, that is a, now I'm going to sound like that guy, that is a proper <laughs> mouthful, that's incredible. But you had no prior experience to this, so you re or you reverse engineered the process. How, how? So, to be brutally honest with you, it started as simply as it sounded, playing on my stove. So when we wanted to launch with, call it a blush and a bubbly pop, we literally played on my stove with fructose levels, with wine levels, with water levels to nail the flavor profile. Yes. Once we got that, we then brought on a food science lab with a very strict brief to say, we need to make this commercially stable, but we don't want to work with preservatives and we want to play at six to 7% ABV per popsicle, but we don't want to have gums and we don't want to have nasty solidifiers. And with the help of them, they completely nailed what we wanted. And now we sit with a flavor profile range from passion fruit and peach margarita to gin and tonic berry infusion, to blush, to bubbly, to a beautiful vanilla coffee. And the best thing is, is that with our alcoholic range, we're only working with local producers, local wine farm, local craft distillery. Yeah, which really resonates with me because part of the, dare I say the term criteria, on the basis of who I've been asking to come here is I'm really just trying to find, uh, first of all, cool individuals who are doing great stuff. And this theme is really becoming quite prominent in the form of locally sourced, produced, yes. etc. Because especially during these COVID times now, it's needed more than ever. 100%. 100 and I mean, as a business who's been directly impacted by COVID, obviously, with the alcohol ban, both of them, we can't sell any of our alcoholic products. We can't transport them. You know, we've seen the impact that that's had on our supply chain, because as you know, it's never just the person at the end. It's everyone that you buy from. So we're very fortunate with our non-alcoholic lines available in select wellness warehouse and disc M stores. That can keep going, but nothing like COVID alcohol ban and winter, which is traditionally our quieter mm. season and it's usually supplemented with events, for all of that to grind to a halt, you start pivoting and thinking and moving and strategizing as a business owner more than ever before. And my heart really goes out for you because part of why I set this up 
is we equally as suits and sneakers got the crap kicked out of us yeah. when this came. And <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm mentioning this quite specifically. One of the biggest things that hurt us immediately and hurt me specifically is that events basically went to zero. Absolutely. And it turns out that this is really the same thing that's impacted you outside of distribution, etc. Absolutely. Because you really have a... I guess a connection to events where your products are sold. Definitely. I mean, our, our business model is multifaceted. We sell direct to customer through our online shop. We are in retail spaces, but events are huge for us. And we're not just talking about the public festivals and that sort of thing, but things as simple as a bachelorette, a wedding, corporate events. All of our corporate clients aren't entertaining anymore. I mean, this was our busy period for that. And then obviously leading towards the end of the year, with the year-end functions. And for that to literally close overnight was, it can take your breath away as a business owner, especially when you've got staff that you're responsible for and, and salaries that need to be paid. Yes, and through no fault of your own. Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a difficult thing because on one end, the way I got myself through this patch, and I'm sure you did too, is in a sense, COVID didn't come to attack you or me. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's impacted people, but without getting political, it has been a difficult landscape mm. for the average small business to operate in because the economy was already stuffed pre-COVID. Absolutely. And there've, there's been all these ambiguous um, policies and rules, which I, I mean, I'm not trying to make this, but so it has been really, really difficult. And thus, one of the ways I thought, well, what is the thing that I can do? We made a major pivot in the form mm. of suits and sneakers, then, well, we can't run events. Uh, my partner who's in the behind the scenes here, <laughs> Nico and I, we set up a, a studio, the one that we're in now, and it's been a really hard run to getting back to just breathing again. Oh, absolutely. And so immediately I thought, okay, well, then I can use this as an opportunity to kind of create a showcase where I help other small businesses. Because I think what people don't appreciate is exactly what you're talking about. There's this real knock-on effect. It's mm -hmm. not just... Small businesses don't sit with millions in their bank account. That's they it. recycle the money really quickly. And now you've got staff. So how many well, staff did you have? And So luckily, we, have, we haven't had to let go any of our staff. I mean, we did streamline in the sense that, uh, you know, you contact your suppliers, you look at who can give you a bit of a break in certain areas. But something that we really pride ourselves in as a business is we don't let suppliers down and we don't drop staff. And this might be a controversial thing to say, but no one can survive on UIF. So myself and my business partner took a hit personally on what we take home to keep everyone else paid. We've also got an extremely supportive investment partner who's been with us from day one. He sees how we hustle. We're not afraid to get our hands dirty. But I really true, do believe that these very challenging circumstances that we all find ourselves in in the business landscape, whether you're small, medium or large, this is where you separate the, the real hustlers from the people that fall over at the first hurdle. And screamed into a pillow on many occasions recently of <laughs> sheer frustration but then you kind of you know what they say you can have a meltdown but you got to pick yourself up you got to regroup you got to remember why you're doing it and you can't lose your joy yes. and we've got some very exciting things coming up and some very exciting things that just happen and in the midst of the darkness we're focusing on the light so what i'd like to try to do with the, the little minute the limited time that we have within this um, interview and the showcase is I would love to just glean from you some of the other mm. lessons that you've learned during this time. Almost the advice, as it were, that you would give to other businesses who aren't necessarily doing what you do because you're yes. quite unique, but who are in a similar position, similar size, etc. What are your thoughts around what would the advice that you would give to people in a position like yours? I think if there was two main pieces of advice I could give is never ever run your business top heavy. It doesn't matter how you grow or where you start, continually look at what is your bottom line, what are you spending and on what, and always look for efficiencies and improvements. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to ask suppliers for more competitive rates. In the climate in which we find ourselves, no one wants to lose clients, and they're willing to fit in with a business model that you might have maybe had to pivot to or adapt to. So you've got to have those conversations, be really strict with how you're spending your money and make sure every cent you're spending you can measure return on investment. And then secondly, and really I, I live by this principle from day one that we started this business and will continue to relentlessly persist. Do not give up. Do not give up on why you started, where you're going and what you want to achieve. Now I'm not saying be silly about it. You need to also realize when something isn't working and know when to diversify, to move, to redirect, but don't give up. This is not for sissies, the entrepreneur life. But fortune favors the brave, and if you push forward, it will be worth your while. And always have a why. It can't just be about making money. It just can't. And our why is 
we want to leave people feeling better than, than before they encountered our product and we want to give them something better than they've had before. Yeah, you kind of stole my next question, which was, <laughs> what is your why? Because if you sit in my position where I've done a few of these now, and I've been very fortunate over my time in Suits and Sneakers to interview a lot of people, like hearing, um, hearing people's why really makes a difference. It's the fundamental difference of what gets people through these, yes. these hard times. Okay, great. So I think, I mean, when you walked into that store that day, what was the, th like, why would you actually do this though? Outside? Is that your, was that your thought process originally? No. I mean, why originally <laughs> did you start? It's actually, I guess, a good way to go. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I've always had a bit of an entrepreneurial streak and my business partner and I at the time, in addition to our own, call it normal lives, were already working on a coconut water project. So our heads were in the mind space of cool, interesting new products that could work in the South African market. And when I looked at the champagne popsicle overseas, something in you, you know when something just drops and you're like, this could be a thing. And as I think I mentioned to you when I arrived, oh, when you're in your darkest moments and you're lying on your bathroom floor at four o'clock in the morning, like, why did I do this to myself? You think you couldn't have just walked past and not seen the flipping thing. But despite all the hurdles, I keep coming, keep coming back to the fact that very few people have the opportunity to create something and do something that no one's done before. Mm. And if my whole business were to go up in smoke tomorrow, I know we've created a range that no one has ever done in South Africa. We have broken our borders, we've shipped to Mauritius, we've exported to Singapore, and we launched Frost Popsicles USA last month in California. And that for me is an achievement in itself. Absolutely. Look, again, people don't appreciate how hard entrepreneurship <laughs> is, I think especially in something like this with what you do. Do you want to show people quickly? Yes. So I've just got a couple of our a couple of our options here: our passion fruit and peach margarita. Okay. So that is. I'm going to point this at my closer. The agave spirit. Just showing, I love the packaging, and I have to say that when I discovered you, and then I'm going to give that back to you. When I discovered you. And our vanilla coffee non-alcoholic pop, just one of our non-alc ranges. I love it. When I discovered you, and then I went and looked at your website, and I just I get the sense from you that everything you do, you really focus on detail. You're just very, like your website was excellent. <laughs> Thank when you. I went and just did a little bit of research about you, your packaging is excellent. Obviously, you're giving me the, the behind the scenes view in terms of the thought process that went into no preservatives, no junk, mm. artificial, etc. Yes. So I think even in there, just, and you know, for the record, I don't know you well, but for there, like that is such a great trait to have from an entrepreneurship perspective where you really dot your I's and cross your T's. So well done. Thank you. I mean, I think, you know, the age old, age old saying the devil is in the detail. There's a difference and my very patient business partner again reminds me of this regularly. There's a difference between excellence and perfectionism. Sometimes I can, I am a total perfectionist, a type personality. I want everything done a certain way, but I now try and focus more on excellence and I think with the mm. consumer in mind and anyone with a product or a business or a service should do that. I know what I want to experience when I land on a web page, when I feel a product, when I get a delivery, when I walk into a store and I look at our freezers, I know as the consumer what I expect. And as a business owner, if you lose sight of how important your customer is, you are dead in the water. The mm. minute you drop the ball on quality and experience, that's what people remember. You can make mistakes, you don't always have to get it right, but people will remember how quickly did you fix it and how did you make up for it? And that's what I think as a business owner you need to be focused on. Well, you know, again, we like to keep you super casual and fat, but I really have to just give you kudos on that. I think that you've absolutely knocked that out of the Thank you. I love the, the spirit in which you are going about creating your products and even the service behind it. So well done on that end. I'd like to kind of give you the space if you want to look at your close up and just mm -hmm. tell people how can they contact you, what is the best way, and use this opportunity to create a call to action to people on the other side. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so if you want to find out more information and you want to contact me or my company, you can reach us on www.frostpopsicles.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Frost Popsicles and on Instagram at Frost Pops. And guys, I'd really encourage you to follow us on social media because we've got a very, very exciting new product launching next month. It's going to be South Africa's first vodka-based, low-calorie, pure spiked sparkling water, ready to drink in a can, frost sparkles. We're using all of our experience in alcohol innovation and we're bringing something new and exciting at an affordable price point. When other companies are wanting to close their doors, 
we're wanting to bring something new and fresh to the South African market. So keep an eye on us. We're going places. Jeez, and if all else <laughs> fails, you can just go into television presenting <laughs> and you can just wax God. that. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here is my call to action. Again, this is just from one small business owner to another and one small business to another where what I'm trying to do is use the resources that we've managed to create during this time to shine a spotlight on, as I mentioned, people and businesses that are doing cool things, the way they're going about it is excellent and so forth. You get the drill. So the way that you can help us collectively is you can pay it forward. The incredible thing that we all have at our disposal right now that costs nothing is social media. Mm. So to just share it forward, to just kind of share this video and say, how cool is this? Or, you know, go Tash, just something. <laughs> I think it makes a huge difference. So that really is my call to action to each and every one of you. And then it seems like it's a matter of time before this alcohol ban is removed. Hopefully, fingers, I guess we hold. Fingers crossed, everything crossed. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, really, I want to like kind of say to people, just, I, we need to create a culture yeah. where we support excellence. Okay. And of course, people need to want your product. Of course. Uh, that is important. But we need to really understand the spirit and the, the essence of how people are coming about creating this. And I think if more people saw the behind the scenes view of what people like you went through to just bring this end result, if they could respect that more, they would naturally jump behind you. So and I think this is what this is about. I completely agree. And there was just two last things I wanted to say. Firstly, we've gone to great lengths to create a pop for every palette. So there's something for everyone, irrespective of what your personal taste is. Secondly, I just wanted to thank you as a business owner. It is very easy in tough times for everyone to stick in their little lanes and their little bubbles. I've been guilty of it, especially when you're under stress. And to create a platform where small businesses can have a voice, um, it is unbelievable. I certainly will be recommending businesses um, to put their names forward. I think this is a great platform. And exactly to your point, um, be kind. We've got to stick by each other. We are also running a 50% off sale, so people can check out our website. We can only deliver when the band lifts, but you can still visit our website. And if we all stick together, irrespective of what obstacles comes our way in this country or wherever, we can push through and we'll be stronger for it. I agree. I mean, the big feeling that I felt is just the overriding uh, mentality for me has been just be more human. Yeah. That's what this is about. So, Tash, thanks so much for Thank coming you, in. Thank you, Mark. Really. Thank you for having me. Thank you for... <laughs> like. I'm learning so much when people like you come in. Thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure. Awesome. <laughs>